Oh, sorry. We had a little bit of technical difficulties. I am here now. I'm Mr. Sam with Kids Table. Hello. Welcome. I'm Mr. Sam with Kids Table. We had a little bit of technical difficulties. Sorry about that. We are now live, though. Um, so we are making our banana chocolate muffins today. So I know we are starting a little bit later than initially expected, but um, we are here now and ready to go. So uh, if you have all of your ingredients ready, uh, you will need uh, two bananas. You're going to need a cup of um, both whole wheat and all-purpose flour together, so 50-50 or one or the other. Uh, you'll also need half a cup of sugar, teaspoon of baking soda, not baking powder, and I'll go over why that is important in a minute. Uh, you'll need one egg, a quarter cup of oil, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So, um, we also, for our equipment, we're going to need a muffin tin, just like this one here. We're going to need a mixing bowl to mix up all of your uh, muffin ingredients, as well as a chopper will assist with uh, your bananas as well, but we're going to mash them up into our uh, muffin batter in a minute as well. So, we're ready to go. I'm ready to go. We're in a little bit of a hurry, but we're good now. This is an easy recipe, so we can all take a deep breath and we can still complete this recipe on time. I also have a little bit of a fun thing that we get to do together as well that de deals with our bananas. And I'm really excited to show you this too. This is a fun thing that you can do around the house. Um, it will always make all of our little chefs extremely happy and make them laugh. And that is, when you take a normal banana, any good old normal banana, and you take either a very dull knife or you can use um, like the back of a pen, like make sure you clean it first. But if you use the back side of a pen or even your finger too, if your fingers are clean, and you just press into this part of the banana right here to make a little tiny dot, just a little itty bitty tiny dot, and then take a knife, and trim off this front part of your of your banana after a couple hours what will happen is that you get a little eye and then you just cut right here and then all of a sudden you've got a banana dolphin how awesome is that so we're going to take our banana dolphin here later and we are going to make a really awesome banana chocolate chip muffin today i'm so excited I've been waiting all morning to eat these. I'm happy that we're finally here and we can, in, we can enjoy them. So first things first, what you will need is a uh, bowl and a whisk for our muffin batter. You will also want to keep a cutting board handy if you do need to slice up your bananas. If your bananas aren't super ripe, so they don't have a lot of brown spots on them, you'll definitely want to have um a chopper or a knife ready to cut them up first before we mash them together because it makes it a little bit easier to mash those uh not as ripe bananas up if you cut them up first thankfully we got some pretty ripe bananas today so i don't think we'll have to cut them up all right muffins every kind of cake every kind of baked good has its own way of mixing it they're called mixing methods and we've done so many different kinds with our Facebook videos over the past couple of weeks of you know cookie methods of uh, the different kinds of cake methods like straight mixing method or sponge methods we've done all of these muffins have their same method as well and if you notice on your uh, on your recipe card it doesn't say muffin mixing method on it but the way that you go through it that's the muffin mixing method so if you want to make blueberry muffins or you want to make cranberry muffins or any other kind of muffins you just take and edit the ingredients a little bit but you you make it in the exact same way you use the exact same method this one's a little bit um, more unique because we're actually using the bananas not only as a flavoring but we're also using it to incorporate structure into our muffins as well which i'll show you um, again later so first thing with any kind of muffin when you make it is that you want to combine all of your wet ingredients 
and you want to combine all of your dry ingredients. You want to keep them separate. What this does is all the things that create structure, which are the eggs and the flour, they get mixed together last, right at the very end. And also things like our baking soda aren't getting whisked up and starting to activate until right, we, right before we put it into the oven. Because if you let that baking soda, if you let it just sit in your, uh, in your muffin batter for too long, then it'll start activating too soon and you won't have nice, beautiful, fluffy muffins. You're end up going to have like soft hockey pucks, which no one likes hard, dense hockey puck, hockey puck muffins. We want to have nice, delicious, airy ones. So if you need me to repeat anything as we go on, as usual, make sure you just put them in the comments. Also, if you want to say hey by just putting your name in there so I can address you by name instead of saying the people of Facebook world, that would be awesome too. And finally, if you can guess what kind of insect or animal or whatever is on my shirt, I'll give you a virtual high five too. And I give you a hint, it is not butterflies. So first things first, we are going to combine our liquid ingredients. And now I wanna show you how we're going to combine our dry ingredients. So oddly enough, our first liquid ingredient is something that when you hold it is not liquid right now. It's our egg. And with our egg, we always wanna make sure that we are cracking it on the flat side of our table, not on the side of our bowl. Because if we crack it on the side of our bowl, there's a chance that the shell can go into our bowl. So we're gonna crack it here. And then we're gonna put it into our bowl. And I know I say this every time, but the germs from eggs on, are actually on the egg shell as well as inside the egg too. So even if you don't get egg yolk or egg white on your fingers when you crack your egg, you still want to wash your hands because there's some of those germs on the outside too. So I'm going to go wash my hands and I'll be right back to finish this part of the recipe. All right. So, oh, hello, Claire. Welcome to the kids' table. So, with our egg, this is what we call our binder. So, if you're in school or if you have siblings that are in school, they have these big three ring binders that hold all of their papers. Well, your egg is just like that with all of your cupcake ingredients or your muffin ingredients, and they hold all those together. So, if you were to put this cup, this uh, muffin into the oven and it didn't have the egg in it, it would all just separate and fall apart and not be a nice, beautiful muffin. So you also wanna make sure that you really whisk this up and you wanna get a lot of nice little air bubbles because that's gonna assist your muffin in getting nice and light and fluffy. All right, so we got our eggs in here. They're all whisked up. Our Second of three liquid ingredients is this right here. It smells super good. It comes from beans, oddly enough, but it is our vanilla extract. So besides being delicious smelling, it's also going to be an enhancer of all the other flavors in our, in our muffins. So think of vanilla extract a little bit like salt in savior, savory recipes. So you know how salt makes a tomato taste more sweet or it makes uh, garlic taste more vibrant. With vanilla extract, it'll make our bananas taste sweeter, it'll make the chocolate chips taste sweeter, and it'll even make us taste some of the delicious aspects of flour too, because flour's got its own taste too. So we're gonna put one teaspoon of vanilla extract in here. And we're gonna whisk that up. So that's all whisked up. That was an easy one to whisk up. The next one's a little bit more difficult to whisk up. And that is our oil. And the reason why this is a little bit harder to whisk together is because it doesn't want to mix. It wants to stay separate. It doesn't like other ingredients. It wants to stay apart. So this is when you really have to whisk it until you don't see any oil around the edges of your egg. You don't see any spots on top of the egg. You just see one mixture with your oil. So we're gonna do a quarter cup of oil. On your recipe card, it says a neutral oil. 
We recommend anything from a canola oil to a grapeseed oil, anything that doesn't have a strong flavor on its own, such as um, like sesame oil or olive oil. We use sunflower oil, which isn't as neutral tasting, but it tastes really good with this recipe. I know it's a little bit harder to get, but you should be able to find it in some stores. We love using it here. We know a farm close to here that makes it for us. So we always use that as our neutral oil. So we're mixing this up. Remember, you don't wanna see any of that oil when you mix it. And you also wanna make sure that you see all those bubbles, all those little air bubbles is what's gonna be all the little air bubbles in your muffins when they grow in the oven. All right. And it's going to be a nice light yellow, nice and frothy. So we've got our vanilla extract, we've got our oil, we've got our egg in here. That's all of our liquid ingredients. So I'm actually going to put this to the side. I'm going to whisk it up again in a second, but we're just going to put it off to the side. And in another bowl, we're going to combine all of our dry ingredients or anything that isn't liquid. So our flour, our baking soda, our sugar. Is that everything? I think so. Our chocolate chips. That's included into our dry ingredients, but not our bananas. Because our bananas, they're very interesting because they're not a liquid ingredient, but they're also not dry. They're kind of an in-between. And what they do is they replace two ingredients that one of them is liquid and one of them is a dry ingredient. So those we're going to do very last, which is kind of cool because those bananas, they replace some of our sugar. It also replaces some of our liquid. So instead of using milk or a juice or anything like that, that comes in the banana. So it's kind of a really cool ingredient with just this kind of recipe. Bananas are really cool for any kind of baking. That's why we love banana bread, banana cakes, anything like that. But even more importantly, they can make all of the things that we create at Kids Table that are baked goods healthier. Because instead of just using more granulated sugar, we can use bananas and they taste good and they're just as sweet. It's pretty cool. So we've got our flour. We are going to take our sugar but you want to have a half cup of sugar. A little bit more than that. We've got our half cup of sugar. We got our flour. We now need to do a tablespoon, I mean teaspoon, sorry, don't do a tablespoon, a teaspoon of our baking soda. Now, I told you earlier that you want to make sure that you've got baking soda versus baking powder. That is because in baking powder, you have something called a softener. And usually it's something like cream of tartar or some chemical, and it's not a bad thing, but that baking powder will make anything that you bake softer. So think of brownies or fudge or lemon bars, things like that, where they're nice and soft and they don't have the super airy, springy texture. But we want that with our muffins. So we're going to use baking soda. If you only have baking powder, what you want to do is the recipe that we have for the teaspoon, that measurement, you want to double it. And then that's how much baking powder you use. It's not a perfect uh, ratio on that. So it's not going to be exactly the same and it is going to be softer, but that's at least how you can get the same amount of spring or the same amount of growth with your muffins in the oven using baking powder as baking soda but always try and make sure that you have both on hand because they both are drastically different, even though they do kind of the same thing. So we're gonna do our baking soda. Always make sure that you get a nice even scoop and we're gonna put it into the rest of our dry ingredients. So at this point, I'm actually gonna take a spoon. You can get another whisk if you like, but I'm gonna take a spoon because I'll need to use this later. And we're just gonna gently mix this together. So when we end up whisking this into our uh, batter, oh no, I spilled some. I'm always making a mess in the kids' table kitchen, it's crazy. So when we do mix these together, 
There's not going to be clumps of flour. There's not going to be little pockets of sugar. And definitely you don't want any pockets of just the baking soda or you'll have one cupcake that explodes in your oven and you'll have the rest of them just sink down. Oh, so can you please repeat the last step? Yes. So, so far in this step, I have one cup of flour. I have a teaspoon of baking soda. Now I've got half a cup of sugar, of granulated sugar, and I'm combining these together. And then in this bowl, I have my one egg, my teaspoon of vanilla extract, and my quarter cup of uh, oil. And that's mixed over here. So we're keeping them separate for right now. And if that did not answer your question, please let me know as well, Rachel or Claire. By the way, my little banana dolphin his eyes have gotten even more darker. So cool. All right, so this is all mixed up. So the last thing that I have for this recipe is my bananas. So are my bananas. I've got two of them. You wanna have nice uh, larger bananas, about this big. I don't, I don't know how to say that this big is probably gonna be like a cup and a half maybe. You wanna have as ripe as you can. If you do not have super ripe bananas, go ahead and uh, chop them up with a chopper. If not, go ahead and peel your banana. If you notice how I peel that, I actually peeled it the wrong way. If you know how to properly peel a banana, go ahead and put it in the comment box. I wanna see if anyone knows the proper way of peeling a banana, mainly which end you peel a banana from. I'm going to chop this up just to help me out a little bit too. Why not? Give you some time to answer that question. What's the correct way or the most effective way of opening up a banana? Ah, shoot. There we go. Had a runaway banana. Let's see if anyone's gotten it so far. Ah, not yet. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you. You actually want to open it from the bottom. How crazy is that? So you actually pinch this just like that and it'll split open and then you pull it just like that. And what happens is you can easily pick that little black part off of your banana. Oh yeah, so it looks like Claire got it. Awesome, high five, that's super cool, yeah. And then that way you can use your entire banana. It's pretty cool. I learned that in school one day and it completely blew my mind, which I think I'll go ahead and do as well for you, which is if I told you that bananas are berries, what would you think of that? That these are berries. What? That's so crazy. They're berries, just like blueberries. And then here's something even crazier. Raspberries and blackberries are not berries. What? I learned that last year. I tell everybody about it all the time now. So if you want to look really, really cool in front of your science teacher at school, just be like, hey, did you know that bananas are berries and blackberries aren't berries? Like, what? It's crazy. So I'm going to take my bananas here and I want to put it into my liquid ingredients. The reason why is that it's easier to mash these up into the liquid ingredients rather into the dry ingredients. Because if we try and mash these up into the dry ingredients, it's going to look really weird. It's not going to turn out right. So I'm going to put all my bananas here. Oh, runaway banana. Into my liquid ingredients. If your whisk isn't strong enough, you want to use a masher. I've got one back there, but I think my bananas are soft enough to where I can mash them up with the whisk. And we're going to gently mash these together. You don't want to go crazy and then have muffin batter just flying around everywhere. So just be gentle, but still making sure that you smash these together. If you like to have like nice little chunks of banana in your muffins, don't smash them to smithereens. Don't make a paste out of them. Leave some chunks. That's what I like to do. But if you do like them to be all nice and mashed up and you don't want those chunks, go ahead and have at it. Smash them up as much as you can. All right. 
So mine are done. I want to whisk these up a little bit more just to see if there's any bananas that I missed, which I did. All right, so we've got our bananas mashed up into our liquid ingredients and we've got our dry ingredients. What we're going to do now is we are going to combine these together before we put them in the oven, which if you did not hear me at the beginning, you wanna make sure that your oven is preheated to 350 degrees. 350 degrees is like the ultimate cake and muffin temperature. So if you ever have a recipe that doesn't, for some reason have a temperature on it, just go with 350. That's always the go-to temperature that we like to put in recipes. So I'm gonna put our dry ingredients into the bowl. And we are going to whisk these up very slowly, very gently, because we don't want any of the flour to fly out, but we also don't want to over mix this, which you can easily do with any type of muffin or bread or cake. You just wanna mix this until the flour disappears. So you don't see it anymore. You just see the muffin batter. Sometimes it only takes, you know, 15, 16 stirs. Oh, my muffin batter is so thick that I need to use a spoon. And you should probably switch over to a spoon too. That's the whole reason I brought a spoon over here. I forgot about it. That's okay. Caught it early on. I'm waiting for someone to ask me a very important question, which is, where's your chocolate chips? I'll give you a hint. Our chocolate chips are not quite in here yet because we're going to fold them in here. Erg. There we go. All right, so your muffin batter is going to be very thick. It's going to be very dry. And the reason this is, is that the moisture needed to usually make your muffin batter um, thinner than this is still sitting inside of those bananas, which are gonna cook through and then actually moisten your uh, muffin as you cook it in the oven. So it's going to be a little bit drier like this. So once you've mixed that together, you don't see the flour anymore. That's where we're gonna put in our chocolate chips. I'm going to do a, a half cup of chocolate chips, throw them right in there, and mix these together. And you only want to mix it until your chocolate chips are nice and even throughout your batter. You don't want to over mix it, but eventually it will look like this. So it actually looks like a really, like a thinner cookie dough, but it's not. It's our, it's our batter. But once you have it mixed together, just like this, you're going to get your muffin tin and we're going to spray it. Now, if you've cooked with me or baked with me before, you know I'm a huge stickler about this next part. Do not, and I repeat, do not drench your muffin tin in a ton of oil, okay? Don't do it because it makes your muffins greasy. It sometimes burns the edges or the bottom of it. You don't need to do that. They don't need that much especially if you've got one that's already kind of nonstick. So what I'm gonna do, and I've been asked to show this a little bit more clearly, is I'm gonna go from one side to the other, just like this, one way. And now I'm gonna turn it upside down like this, well, on the side. And now I'm gonna do it one more time. And if I see any spaces that aren't coated, I'm just gonna gently tap those. But then that's it. I'm not spray painting this thing. I'm not coating it completely. This is plenty to make sure that our muffins don't stick to this. The reason why you have muffins that will sometimes stick to the inside of this is not only if you miss a spot, but if you don't wait long enough for them to cool off, because when they cool off, they'll also release a little bit. All right, so we're gonna fill up our muffin tins about two thirds of the way, so just a little bit more than half. You don't want to fill it all the way up because if you do that, your muffins will spill over the side and you'll have a sad day. You won't, you won't have nice, beautiful muffins. You'll have these like little droopy, weird looking muffins. And you don't have to be perfectly exact at this point. 
is I'll show you a trick to make sure that you have the same amount in every single muffin tin. Oh, almost put it into the same one. Ah. Here we go. Make sure you use every last bit of your cupcake batter. You don't want to waste any of those ingredients that you got for this. All right, so as you can see, it doesn't look even. It doesn't look pretty right now. That's okay. We're going to take it and we're going to shake it. You might have to shake it pretty hard. So this is the thicker batter. I even need to smack it from the bottom. But what happens is that they all lie flat now. And I can see if one has more than another one, and I can move it from that one into the one that's lower. So I've actually got a couple of those. Now I'm just going to shake it again. So instead of trying to be a mad scientist, making sure I have exactly the same in each one, I just throw them in there, shake it, and I can find out easily afterwards. Okay, so we are going to put these into the oven to bake. The amount of time that you see on your recipe card is the amount for these things to usually cook all the way through. But with muffins, you always want to keep an eye on them because they might cook faster than normal or they might cook slower than normal. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put these in the oven for 10 minutes, just 10 minutes, and I'm going to rotate them after that so they cook evenly. But also after that 10 minutes, I can really find out if my muffins need maybe five more minutes or they only need three, maybe even six, you know? So we can learn that even better after those 10 minutes. So I will be right back. I'm going to go, go get my uh, oven loaded up with some muffins and I'll be right back to chat. Alrighty, so at this point, because you know these aren't like cupcakes where we have a little bit of time to make some frosting while those are baking, we're just making our muffins here. I now get to have a really cool moment where we can just chat. You can ask me any kind of questions that you have about kids' table, the recipe, whatever you like. And during that time, I'm gonna clean this up because if you were paying attention, I was definitely making a mess with all of my ingredients. I've got oil over there. I've got a chocolate chip right there. I got some banana peels over there and flour everywhere. So I'm going to clean up. But if you have any questions or if you are not sure about one thing or you really like the smell of this or whatever it may be, go ahead and put it into the comments and I will definitely answer you. And also, if you can figure out what is on my shirt, they're super cool. They're one of my favorite insects. That's a... Uh, that's a hint. If you can figure these out, I'll give you a virtual high five too. Those are very, very important to me. So hopefully someone guesses it. I think someone will though. All right. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to clean up a little bit and then hopefully our muffins will magically cook super fast. Can you pause for a sec? I'm not. Yes, we can. Um, where, what step are you at right now? Do you want to put that in the comment box? And then if you need assistance, I can let you know. Ooh, dragonflies, close. And the muffin tin, okay, perfect. So you got your batter and everything. Uh, if it takes a while to get the muffins in there, because making sure that they're all perfect, that's totally fine. You're all good.
I also want to show you guys how to do this because this always this is one of the more fun things that I got to learn when I was in school. But if you want to make a little banana dolphin at home with your bananas, I want to show you how to do that right quick. They're super cool. But you have your banana here. And what you want to do is you're going to take a knife or a chopper, whatever you have around, and you're going to cut just this. You're just going to trim this little end piece from where it hangs off the tree. So it makes it nice and flat, just like that. And then with either a very dull knife, you're just going to turn it around like this. So you make a little eye, just like that. And you won't be able to see it right away because it needs time to turn brown. Or you could also use your finger just like this. It'll do the same thing. I'm not sure about you, but whenever I would go to the cafeteria when I was in elementary school, I would always write my name on the peel of my banana too. So it would say Sam on it. But you're going to do that just like that. Can I make mini muffins with a leftover batter? Of course you can. With those, you want to cook them at the same temperature, but you only want to cook them for maybe seven, eight minutes. They don't take that long, um, especially if they're the little tiny ones, like the super tiny ones. They don't take that long. So uh, I would put them in there for five minutes or six minutes and then rotate them. And then based upon that, I would do another two, maybe three minutes from there. So once you make your little eyes here, you can see this one is starting to become, its, become an eye. It's pretty cool. Then you want to take a knife. You do have to use a knife for this part. But what you're going to do is you're going to slice the middle part here so it makes its mouth. Just like that. So then you've got his little eye here now. And then now you've got his little mouth. And all of a sudden, now you've got a dolphin. How cool is that? It's a little dolphin. I'm sure Miss Eleanor right now is saying that I'm such a goofball showing y'all how to do this, but I think they're awesome. Whenever I have bananas at the house, I always make them look like dolphins. My roommates think I'm crazy, but it's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you these awesome insects on my shirt. These are moths. I think moths are so cool. Not only is it a really cool word to say, but they are super colorful and they're super neat and they're really good for the environment too. So, that's why I've got this super cool shirt on. But they're moths. M-O-T-H. Not dragonflies. Dragonflies are really cool, though. I might have to get a dragonfly shirt. But if you join me next week, I want to have another animal shirt on. And that's going to be a little bit more difficult to guess because they're smaller. But it's a kind of bird. So you can see next week what kind of animal shirt I have next week. All right. I am going to check my muffins. I've got about two minutes left from that initial time, but I'm always really anxious to see what they look like. So I'm gonna take a, take a look, and then uh, I'll probably even go ahead and rotate them too and see how they're doing. So I'll be right back. If your muffins miraculously are already done or they're very getting very close, go ahead and take a snap, put it into the comments. I would love to take a look at them. Some of your food that you've been sharing with us on Instagram that you've made from the Facebook Live classes have been spectacular. So I love seeing what you're making at home, especially when you're making it alongside me. It makes me happy. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna look at my muffins and we'll see what they look like. All right, so mine definitely needs some more time. I'm guessing seven minutes, maybe eight minutes, but I might actually even uh, pull them out just a little bit early so you can see what they look like. But at this, 
at this point, excuse me, at this point, we're pretty much home free. When your muffins are ready, when you know that they're done, you can tell by two different things. One of them is by sight, and one of them is by, uh, by touch, by feel. So the first way is by sight, and what we're doing is we're making sure that there's none of that raw muffin batter still in the middle of your muffins. So the really glossy, shiny, it'll look like a little pool of our chocolate banana muffin batter. So as soon as that goes away and you've got the dull look of the top of your muffin, that's the first way that you know that they're done. The second way is you'll see the edges of your muffins release so they'll kind of shrink in a little bit from the side of your muffin tin. So you'll have a little gap around the edge. That's also a way that you know that they're done. Once both of those things have happened, that's when you wanna take a toothpick or a skewer or something small, even a thermometer, if you've got a very thin thermometer, and you just put it in and you immediately pull it out. So you just stick it in, pull it out. And if there's any raw muffin batter, on there, then you know that your muffins are not cooked yet. As soon in the immediate time that you no longer have muffin batter that attaches to your toothpick, you know that they are done. With this recipe, it is a little bit weird because you have your chocolate chips. So if you stick your toothpick in there and you pull it out and you see chocolate on it, that's probably not the batter that is sticking to your toothpick, but it's probably just melted chocolate. So it's, at that point, you gotta kind of decipher and figure out, you know, is this muffin batter or is this chocolate? So that's the two ways that you find. Also, your muffins will be nice and golden brown on top, just a little bit. You'll see little spots of golden brown, but that's about it. So, now we wait. I am just, all wrapped up in anticipation. I want these muffins. I can't even tell you how badly I want to eat these muffins. I wonder what would be really good with these muffins. Ice cream is always my go-to with any type of baked good, but let's, let's be healthy today. I think that maybe this could be really cool. You could make a bowl of oatmeal, especially if it's like brown sugar cinnamon oatmeal, mm, my favorite, but you can do that and then you can either eat your muffin on the side or, because Mr. Sam always has weird ways of eating things. If you saw our Instagram video about how I frost cupcakes, you know, I like to do things a little bit more weird. But you can take one of these muffins and you can cut them up into like quarters or into little eighths, like little tiny pieces, and then just put them in the oven, like a 350 degree oven. I know, this is weird, just follow me. Track with me on this one. Probably all the kids are like, this is kind of weird. Oh, Jocelyn and Lila, hey, good to see you again. You've cooked with me a few times. So you can cut those, toast them in the oven, those little pieces of muffin, toast them in the oven, and then actually top your oatmeal with little crispy, delicious pieces of banana chocolate muffins. So good, so good. Ooh, this is a great idea from Claire and her mom. This is fantastic. You can make a smoothie. What? You can make a chocolate banana smoothie to go with your chocolate banana muffin. At least I hope she's not saying she wants to put the cupcake inside of a smoothie. That could be a little too much. It could be a little weird, but maybe you can even find like different flavors of smoothies that could go with bananas and chocolate. Maybe like an well, I just constantly think of oatmeal, like oatmeal smoothies. They're really good. But you can really think of anything. So these are delicious muffins. They are a little bit more of a dessert muffin because we put the chocolate chips in it. But they're still super, super yummy. And we saved on a lot of extra sugar by using the bananas. They're super great. So my timer, thankfully, is almost up. I want to go check my muffins. Hopefully they're done. And please let me know. If anyone, <laughs> Rachel and Claire are like, no, don't put the muffin in the smoothie. I just immediately had that imagery and it was hysterical to me. Just make a muffin smoothie. Um, 
So I'm gonna go check on my muffins. Hopefully they are done. I hope so, so bad. And then I will be right back to share them with you. And please share with me your muffins. I wanna see them so bad. So I'll be back in just a moment. All right, so I couldn't resist. I went ahead and ate one, I'm not gonna lie. And I pulled the rest of mine out. And I actually just over, like barely overcooked my muffins. That's why they're a little bit darker brown up here instead of being light brown. And that's probably because as usual, I got long-winded chatting with y'all, but it's still super yum. I also learned that these are very, very hot coming out of the oven. So make sure that you blow them off and cool them down before you eat them. But they are so yum. On the inside, you see all the little chocolate chips. And on this side, you actually see, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it, but I've got a nice little chunk of banana right over here. They're so good. Mm, so hot, chocolate, melted chocolate, so hot. But they are fantastic. Mm. I think I know what my breakfast is going to be for the next two days or all these muffins. So as usual, it was a total blast cooking with y'all. And I hope I see pictures of your muffins either in the comments or you can tag us with uh, either our at kids table or on Instagram, whatever you like. I would love to see them. I'd love to see Excuse me. Oh, man, that muffin is so good, but it is pretty hot. But I would love to see you again next week. And then my chocolate chips melted. Mm. So just make sure that you let them cool off and they'll kind of come back together. But I kind of like it when my chocolate chips are melted. They're so yummy. So next week is a big week for Kids Table because next week is the start of summer camp. I'm so excited for summer camp. So next week, we have a couple camps going on. So check the website for those. And then we will have our teen camp starting the week after that, which is my favorite thing in the entire world. But we are going to get into that next week. We are still going to do some of our Facebook classes. So I'm not going to run away. Don't worry, I'll be here. But 
We will uh, have an awesome recipe next week. So just make sure that you keep your eyes on our Facebook page to see what that recipe is. And I will see you again next week. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoy your banana chocolate chip muffins and see you soon.